Yeah, I was trying to call the Goblin King the other day and went straight to voicemail. Dude, your eye, it's doing some stuff. No, it's not. Everything's fine. No, it's seriously, like, it's all over the place right now. That can't be healthy. I feel great. I feel better than ever, to be honest. Dude, we gotta go see a doctor. We don't need a doctor, man. These things usually go away on their own. Oh. Okay, power button on, record button, cable in. Okay, hello, friends. Producer's credit is in danger. Sluka, well, Sluka is no more. I know you are very sad about this. I actually didn't know him that well, so. Adrian, Christopher, you were my best friends. Okay, well, now I feel bad. The hidden one, she's coming. She has more power than before, too much. I know her plans. She will consume all of the power in the world and destroy it. No more producer crate. No more magic. No more ice cream. You must stop her. How are we gonna do that? It's uh, recording, so please, no questions. You cannot kill her. You kill her, you'll kill all of the magic. You must find a way to stop her without the killing. So throw her into a black hole or put her into a time flux or maybe Lots of flight traps around, she gets sticky with the... Sluka, no, no, Sluka, not really prepare for this. That sounds like a lot of work. It will be a lot of work. You must join forces with the one who holds the other half of the magic. The one who walks with defeat awakening. The unicorn. Man. Ooh, I don't know, man. We don't really like him. Trust him. If he's a right fit awakening, he is truly worthy. The unicorn is your only hope. And you are my only friends. Okay, goodbye. Okay, Sluka needs to prepare for battle. How do you turn this off? Need to limber up a little bit. Maybe naked Pilates. Turn it off. Maybe jumping's rope. How do you, how do you, you can't turn it off? Why are you watching this? I can't turn it off. I can't turn it off. I don't want to see this. No. No. Christ. I don't want to. It's in my head. Turn it off. It's in my head. What up, Kratos? My name is Chris Kelly. My name is Adrian Jensen. Did you see that, that Star Wars teaser? Did you see I it? I did. Very interesting. <laughs> that sounds like a uh, um, a review of someone who did not actually watch it. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> yes, very interesting. All right. So, of course, we are Star Wars fans. <laughs> One of our favorite effects going back to the original trilogy is the Star Wars hologram effect. It Heck is yeah. very iconic and very blue. <laughs> but how do you do it. But how do you do it? Well, that's what we're going to show you here today. We're actually being real methodical about the way that we shoot this. Since we're all roughly the same height, we're going to be using our eye line as sort of our base measurement. So to make everything line up, the first thing we want to do is we're going to have our camera up at about where our eye line is. And here we've got our tracking marker, which is also at eye level. And over here where we're shooting Sluka, we've got the camera at his eye level so that we know if we composite his eye level to have it be in the same spot that our tracking marker is, all the perspective is gonna work out perfect, right? Yeah, okay. These are similar concepts to the ones that we discussed in the Giant Man tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out and learn a bit more about perspective and how it relates to visual effects. That's also the episode, by the way, that introduces Sluka for the very first time, as well as Adrian's cool bionic eye. See, everything just mm -hmm. connects. It's a very elaborate story. If you're not caught up with the production crate lore, that's a great place to start. I like your mustache. I like your glasses. The footage of Chris and myself, Adrian Jensen from ProductionCrate.com, was shot in some very low light with a dark background and with some practical blue lights. Those, they're real. We actually use light bulbs. Whoa! This is because we wanted the hologram to show up really well against the dark background and also look like it's interacting with the scene. That's what the blue lights are for. Sluka's big old head was shot in front of a black backdrop with some super contrasty high key lighting. We're gonna use this exposure control here to turn up the exposure so we can see what detail still exists in the background that we need to get rid of. This is not an effect, it's just a tool to help us see stuff. If we were to render this right now, the exposure would be unchanged. It's just for our reference. 
All right, we can use a levels to crush down the blacks a bit to get rid of that noise. When we can no longer see the noise with the exposure turned up, we know that the noise is gone. This does darken our image overall a little bit, so we can move the middle slider back to help compensate for that. But we're gonna be adding a bunch of glow and all kinds of other stuff later on anyway. So for now, I think we're just done worrying about it. Don't stress people, life is good. <laughs> life is good, man. Right now we can still see his neck and his torso, and that's not what we want. We want it to be a big old freaking head. So I let's... don't want to see anything below the neck. That's, That's for sure, Sluka. No! No! Let's add a black solid over top of all this, and we're going to draw some masks to cover up all that stuff. Cover it up, Sluka. I don't I don't want to see this. If you want some more tips on rotoscoping, check out my pro roto course. It's in the description. A, a link to it is not, I don't have the whole thing typed out down there. <laughs> if you are not doing a giant head hologram, then this part is not really going to apply to you. So just ignore it. We could pre-compose all that stuff and start adding junk to it to make it more hologramly. 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 Let's start with some scan lines because no matter how far into the future, there's always <laughs> going to be scan lines. It's true. <laughs> the holograms always look so crappy. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna make a new black solid and apply the Venetian blinds effect. Our direction should be set to 90, and then you just need to set the transition completion and the width to whatever looks good to you. Pretty nifty. Next, we wanna add some displacement. Let's make a new adjustment layer, and we're gonna label it large displacement. We're gonna put on a turbulent displace effect, and we're gonna set it to horizontal only. We're gonna turn our amount down really low like one or two or one and a half <laughs> and we're gonna animate the evolution and or the offset turbulence to get the look that we're going for it is super subtle but now we can add some displacement that's a little bit less super subtle we'll add another turbulent displace effect with horizontal displacement but this time we'll turn the size down really really low to about one or two and the amount up really really <laughs> high something like 100 or 150 use My your imagination <laughs> 151. What? This is super cool because it's gonna make our scan lines look like they're a bit misaligned. It's, you know, bad reception in space. A lot of stuff up there getting in the way. Planets. Planets. You got smaller planets. You got planets that aren't Pluto. planets anymore, like <laughs> Pluto, yep. <laughs> You got some, some space bears. We can add a bit of extra distortion that travels up and down the hologram as well. For this, we're gonna need to make a new comp, a brand new comp, guys. In that, we're gonna make a new solid that's the same width as the comp, but a smaller height. Just shrink it down a bit. Open up the transform properties and select separate dimensions. Now you can add an expression on just the Y position, but not the X. In our case, we decided to type wiggle 10 comma 4,000. We can duplicate this a few times and that's gonna give us some more bands moving around, maybe change the size of them. The uh, location of those is gonna get randomized a little bit as you duplicate them because that's just how the wiggle expression works. Yay. All right, let's bring that back into our main composition. We'll duplicate the micro displacement adjustment layer and change the name to traveling displacement. We'll turn the amount up on this one and we're gonna ask it to use the matte comp we just made as an alpha whoop, matte. Whoop, alpha matte. <clears throat> Excuse us. <laughs> We'll make another comp similar to that matte comp, except this time we're gonna add a dark gray background and we're gonna make the white bands a bit thicker and maybe we're gonna slow down their movement and we're gonna bring the opacity of each one down so that when they cross over each other, they get brighter. Now we're just gonna get more colors overall. We can drop this in over top of all of our other effects on an overlay transfer mode to add some signal interference and we can turn down the, uh, the intensity of it by just turning down the opacity. It's really easy to do. All right, all right. Next thing we want is a new adjustment layer to add some color. We added a tint effect and used curves to get a nice blue. Of course, you can make this whatever color you want. After that, we'll add a few instances of glow as well. One glow is never enough. One glow is never enough. Two glows is occasionally enough. Yeah, I like three personally. Let's take that hologram comp and we're gonna drop the whole thing into a new comp where we can add some chromatic aberration. Now, of course, we have uh, 
uh, a chromatic aberration script you could use for this, but we're just gonna show you how to do it manually. Real quick, it's not that hard. Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your... Apply the shift channels effect and turn off the green and blue channels, leaving only red. Now duplicate this layer twice, change one to green and one to blue. You get the idea. Now set them all to an add transfer mode and that's going to rebuild your image, but now you can move the layers around and that's how you get the chromatic aberration effect, or at least one quick way to do it. Over top of everything, you can add a new adjustment layer with a sharpen effect. That's really gonna bring out your scan lines and all your little baby displacement details. We can also add a Gaussian blur and we're gonna blur it out just a little bit to take some of the edge off of that sharpness. Yeah, we're sharpening it and we're blurring it. Uh, they serve different purposes. They're not necessarily opposites of each other. We did use the Gaussian blur in this case instead of the fast blur because the fast blur is far too sensitive. It's just Gaussian blur. Gaussian? 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 Gaussian blur? Gaussian. Whoa, what's going on in here? Uh, I couldn't find music sexy enough for Sluka undressing during the sketch, so I'm taking the task myself to make some sexy Sluka song. <laughs> All right. Finally, we drop this comp into our footage and we give it a screen or an ad transfer mode would also work. All right, let's duplicate it and we can add a CC radial blur effect and set it to a fading zoom type with a negative amount. We're gonna set that to a screen mode. That's gonna give us some projection rays. We'll go ahead and turn down the opacity on ours because we want it to be subtle. On footage crate, we have some new 4K looping projector ray effects. And so we can actually just grab one of those and drop it into our comp to help out with our projection ray look. Those were shot by just putting some fog into the air and then shooting a real projector through it playing some trippy visuals. We also like adding a little bit of extra glow on an adjustment layer. We just feel like this is gonna give us some glow that's controlled by how the hologram interacts with the background, which I think makes it more realistic. I think that makes sense to me, I think uh, You know, so. it looks like good. maybe it does. That's really all that matters. Everybody's yeah. obsessed with realism. No, it's about aesthetic. Holograms aren't real, look. unless you live in the future or the present. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Okay, recording finished. Now look up, prepare for battle. Ah, must be brave. Look up, perhaps jumping rope. Does he get naked first and then jump rope? I don't know. We're, we're making a <laughs> change. Uh, Snoke has like a giant head hologram. Oh, yeah, yeah. It like fills the whole room, so we're gonna make, make you a giant head. <laughs> but then instead of turning it off, you just change the resolution so you shrink yourself to where we can see your full body. Okay. Like, Dude. I thought it would be funny to have a giant head in Sluka, but Chris really didn't want to lose the naked bodies joke, so that's our compromise. <laughs> Up until this point, things have been pretty simple, but you know us here at Production Crate, we cannot resist a, a challenge or an opportunity to overcomplicate things. So we want to do one shot with a moving camera. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to put Sluka on a turntable and we're going to film him, you know, spinning around. But we're going to need a real life camera move to match up with it, which is going to be a lot more difficult. So here's my plan. Uh, I marked the center point here. This is where the hologram is going to actually appear. And we took a tape measure and we measured out how far we want the camera to be away from this center point. And then we went all around the room with that tape measure, putting down little tracking markers to mark out a, uh, a perfect 90 degree slice of a circle, basically. And we're going to follow that with the camera. And then hopefully that all matches up well. Apparently, Chris is the only one who's able to the steady cam. So the ghost of Sluka volunteered to shave his mustache and <laughs> act as a stand in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the coolest thing about the steady cam rig we used is that it always works perfectly. Yeah. Oof, what's wrong with this thing today? Jesus. Okay, just kidding. In the end, we ended up building a super new and shiny janky boy out of the tripod and a wheelchair. It is the latest in a long and proud dynasty of janky boys. This, of course, ended up working out really well as all janky boys do janky boy for life. Since the path we drew out for the camera is a full 90 degree chunk of a circle. We just need to grab a similarly timed chunk of Sluka's head footage to match, which is good because 90 degrees is easy to estimate. And then we just need to speed up the background footage to make it take up the same amount of time. And now it all matches up.
We added a bunch of glitches to this footage. We couldn't really record dialogue with Sluka on the turntable because of the noise and also because we knew we might have a hard time matching up with time ramping for the backplate and his footage. So to make up for it, we just added extra glitches over his mouth and now he can say anything he wants. I so. stole that trick from Zordon. From Power Rangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in Power Rangers, they have a mentor called Zordon and he's a big floating head and his mouth was always super blurry oh. and that's because they just used the same clip of him over and over <laughs> again. Nice. So I stole the same trick. Anyone out there who's the exact same type of dork that I am is gonna know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh man, you're probably saying I have to do all that work all over again. Well, no you don't. We've actually created something very special for you. In the description of this video, you will find a link to the newest script on Production Crate, the Crate Hologram Script. It is super simple and easy to use. As a matter of fact, we used it in most of the shots seen in this video. It's a free script, guys. It's really easy to use. You just pick a preset and apply it to your footage and you're gonna get a bunch of controls to further tweak it from there. Leaving it on basic is going to get you pretty much the same look that we used in the tutorial. The only difference is that we ended up adding a bit of extra blue on ours to match our lighting and our scene, which was very, very blue. It is. There's a bunch of controls in here that we haven't talked about in the tutorial. If you want to add some extra detail, just play around with it. There's also eight presets to choose from, including a random button. You can apply the random preset, and if you don't like what you get from it, just undo it and try it again. It is random. People will think you're so creative with your unique hologram. We're not gonna share your secret. <laughs> it's safe with us. Guys, this is not officially released yet, okay? It's our little secrets for now. Next week, we're gonna do a more detailed launch video that fully explains how to use everything included in the script. So make sure that you're subscribed if you wanna see that. But for now, this is it's just for you. Keep it on the lowdown. Hi. You can tell people. Once we got those hologram effects applied, we're gonna to want to track our footage using the 3D camera tracker. We'll make sure the anchor point of our hologram head layer is near Sluka's eyeballs, and we'll attach that to the tracking marker on the middle of the scene. With that layer selected, come up to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and tell it to orient towards the camera. This is gonna make it so the layer doesn't go all flat and wonky on us. And that, my creative friends, is the effect. That's the final step. Nothing else needs to be done. Can we pin out that tracking marker? We got one more step. Let's pin out that tracking marker, guys. Let's track it in Mocha, and uh, then we'll use the Mocha effect in After Effects to apply that tracking data as masks, which we'll set to subtraction masks. And then we're gonna use the, uh, what's it called? Content Aware Fill. Then we're gonna use the Content Aware Fill to fill in that hole, and now it's like the tracking marker was never there. And now we're done. Wow, it looks great. How and is... that's all we have for you today, creators. Hope you had a good time. Adrian, you got anything you wanna share? Um, you can have a bite of my sandwich. Perfect. I'm gonna go eat Adrian's sandwich. Thanks for watching. Later, creator. What is that? Is that tuna salad? <laughs> Oh, Sluka.